Good morning, Tom Spellman here with Dave Wilson Nursery. It's a nice early spring day, March 22nd here in the San Joaquin Valley. We've had a uh, decent winter, decent chill, fair amount of rain, some snow in the Sierras. In fact, last night we had a little bit of rain come through. So um, it's about that time of year when we really want to pay close attention to thinning. We've had a, we've had a good chill year, we've had a good fruit set. Uh, everything bloomed really well this year. Cross-pollinization was good, so we've got a lot of fruit. And if we don't come through and thin aggressively now, we'll never make fruit size later, especially on the early varieties. So we're gonna look at some things today, some peaches, some plums, some apricots, uh, apriums, uh, picotum. You know, everything set really well this year. So uh, this is the time. This is the time you wanna get out and uh, take advantage of thinning. And I'm not one to stand here and pick fruit one by one. I like to thin with clippers. I like to take a long branch with a lot of fruit and make it a short branch with a few fruit. I think that's a much better use of my time. And then I can go back in and do a little bit of detail work later on if I need to rethin again. And I almost always plan on thinning two times because even me, I'm, I'm not aggressive enough. Uh, I, I always go through and make the effort, but I, I typically don't thin enough the first time around. So thin once now, thin again in a couple of weeks, but make sure to do it early. The varieties that ripen up in May, June, July are the ones that really need the attention now. If you wait too late, you'll never be able to make fruit size. You won't be able to gain it later on by thinning later in the season. So that dime-sized fruit, pea-sized fruit, this is the time you really want to go in and make the difference. Let's take a look at this peach. We've got a couple of varieties right here. Uh, this is Tropic Snow. This is one that ripens up in uh, June and into July. And it's got a pretty decent fruit set. So I'm going to look at uh, branches where I can make a cut and thin by making a cut. So I don't mind coming in here where there's a lot of weight and maybe taking that stick out and maybe taking that stick out. Coming over here, taking out this growth here coming in here, making a thinning cut here, making a thinning cut up here. So I'm taking out branches, the long, lanky branches. Here's 20 fruit on a branch that's 18 inches long. I've got some nice fruit still down below it. So I don't need to maintain all this. And, and by making that one cut, I'm thinning the fruit that's out toward the lanky end of the branch. This is the fruit that's gonna cause the overbalance and the weight and the branch breakage. So the fruit that's held down here where the branch is thicker and a little bit more aggressive, that's the fruit that's gonna have a better chance of standing, staying on the tree anyway. So you wanna, you wanna choose these cuts that you can make and start there. You can always go back in and do a little bit more detail work later. Here's Desert Delight Nectarine. This is an early variety. Even here in the San Joaquin Valley, we're looking at mid to late May, maybe into the first week of June. It already has fruit that's getting close to the size of a nickel and there's lots of clusters. So I will need to thin this vigorously, aggressively, and brutally. Much more brutal than most people would like to see or like to do, but it's important to do this now, otherwise we'll never get the fruit that we want later. So again, decisions like this. Here's 15 or 20 or more fruit on that one branch, and I'm leaving some behind it so that I, I, I can still get a decent crop of fruit. And there's literally, there's literally thousands of fruit on this tree, 2,500 pieces of fruit on this tree. There's no way this tree can actually ripen up all this fruit in good size, good shape, and good quality. So this is also, it's every bit as important to tree health as it is to fruit health. So again, like I said, right now I'm not paying a lot of attention to detail. All I'm really doing is going through and thinning bulk fruit, taking bulk fruit off. I'm going to come back in later and I'm going to look for the detail issues. So if I have a branch like this where I've got fruit that's damaged, that already has some damage on it, it already has a little bit of, um, of blossom end thrip or uh, western flower thrip, so I can come back in and make additional thinning choices later on. What I really want to end up with on nectarines and things that I want to ripen up in good size is I really want about one fruit per every 12 inches. And I, again, I want the fruit to be held more toward the, the, the heavier portion of the branch. So I can still come in here and take that out, take that out, 
take that whole thing out. So now in, in a, about an 18 inch piece, I've got, you know, one, two, three, four fruit. So that looks better. It's gonna ripen up in much better quality. One of the questions that I always get on thinning is like, well, how do you know which fruit to thin and which fruit not to thin? But you know, when you look at a branch like this, it's really pretty easy. Here's a branch that's probably 32, 36 inches long. I've probably got 30 fruit on here and I've got out here on, on this two thirds of the, of the branch, there's 20 or 25 fruit. So I come back in and make that cut, got it all done. You don't really need to agonize over making the decision at this point of what fruit to thin. You just have to thin fruit. If you don't thin fruit, you're not gonna get the size. So coming in now and just thinning the bulk fruit makes all the difference in the world. Um, so work now, detail, or detail work later, the bulk work now. Here's Bella Gold Picotum. That's the uh, peach plum apricot hybrid that we introduced a few years ago. It's been kind of hit and miss as far as production, but um, once we put it in with some apricots, get it in with gold kiss, get it in with you know, a Blenheimer, get it in with good apricot varieties that are gonna bloom at the same time with it in your area. And it could be different depending on area. You know, This may not bloom with gold kissed here in the San Joaquin Valley, but it'll definitely bloom with gold kissed in Southern California or Phoenix, Arizona or areas like that. So you need to make sure that you're growing it with a variety that blooms simultaneously with it in your area. But nice fruit set this year. But you know what? I really don't think I need to thin it. It has, it has enough fruit set. It doesn't have anything that's real aggressive. I could come in here and you know take an occasional fruit out, but in general, they're pretty well spaced and there's a lot of, it's a, it's a nice open center. There's a lot of light exposure and a lot of air movement. It's gonna be a beautiful crop this year. Cherries I typically don't thin either, even though we've got a great crop of fruit on this tree or these two trees. This is uh, actually Mini Royal and Royal Lee. Uh, mini or Royal Lees to the back, Mini Royals to the front. As you can see, they're loaded with fruit. Pollination was wonderful this year. And these, this is only the um, third season in the ground for these trees, so they've done really well. I don't think I want to do any thinning on these cherries at all. We're going to get a little bit of natural drop as we start to get to um, uh, maybe mid-April or late April and we get a little bit of heat. But in general, they ripen early. They ripen in May and the fruit's off the tree in a short period of time. So this is something where the fruit doesn't have to get real large in size, but the more fruit on the tree, the happier we are with cherries. So great fruit set, great pollinization this year. As you can see, they don't mind growing very close together. These were planted li literally just right on top of each other when they were put in the ground. So this is the example of being able to take cross-pollinating varieties like this. Mini Royal and Royal Lee need each other for cross-pollinization, but people always tell me, well, I only have room for one more tree. Well, put two in the place of one. No problem. They can be maintained like a, a double trunk tree and you've got your pollinators built in and you've got your fruit all right here where it can be easily managed and easily dealt with. So here's our Pluot Hedgerow, uh, six Pluots and a Plum. And uh, we did a really nice job of uh, winter pruning these, really brought back uh, the, uh, the structure, took out a lot of dead wood and things that were in there. So, you know, it, it's not a formal hedge. It's not sculpted like a formal hedge, but uh, I can walk along now easily and just make a couple of cuts here and there and just kind of keep everything to a balance so that it, just so that it doesn't grow out into areas where it's going to um, be detrimental to traffic flow or, you know, cause, uh, uh, areas where I'm not going to get good uh, air movement and light exposure. I don't want it to look like a formal boxed hedge, but I just want it to be something that's grown within bounds. So just a couple of snips here and there, just kind of walking along and making sure that nothing's growing out of bounds. So it's really almost a no-brainer, you know, it's just this, this angle that I want. We did some thinning on these a couple weeks ago, 
So they're really pretty well balanced as far as thinning, but remember what I said, after that initial thinning by clippers, for me, I can come back in and do some detail work. So here's an area where I've got on pretty strong structure, but I've got uh, probably 15 or 18 fruit in a small area. So there's a lot of clusters. So I can easily come in now and just do a little pinching. I can thin those clusters down to singles. So I'm looking for the small fruit. I'm looking for the misshapen fruit. I'm looking for anything that isn't going to give me a really nice quality piece of fruit. So if I'm thinning a cluster of three and I only want to thin uh, down to one fruit, I'm going to keep the biggest and most beautiful piece of fruit and thin out anything that shows any damage or any you know, inferior quality for any reason. This is the time to high grade. This is the time to make sure that whatever you're thinning off is the fruit that you would be comfortable losing in the first place. Sweet Treat Pluary. This is our cherry plum hybrid that um, is just a great variety. Seems to produce well anywhere. We're getting great results on this variety in cold climates, mild climates, um, areas with basically no winter chill and it's done well here too. It's given us a nice nice fruit clusters And this is a variety that doesn't get real big the fruit ripens up about the size of a ping-pong ball But still way too much fruit on on this plant So the nice thing about this technique about a spellier now I can do all my work easily. I can stand on the ground in one place. I can work one uh, arm at a time and I can just come through and look for areas where there's too much fruit and See, this is okay, but maybe uh, I could thin one. I'll thin two. I could thin three or four there. I can come back in here, and we're, so we're getting some fruit. You see this type of fruit? This is non-pollinated, so it's going to turn yellow. While it's small, it's going to drop off. Don't waste your time with that. It's going to drop off anyway. So look for the fruit that has a nice, solid green color, and that's where you want to pay attention, and that's where you want to thin. So here's five fruit all in, on, on one little branch. So thin down to one or thin down to two. Here's three or four together, so... Let's thin down to one. Here's some here. Let's thin down to one or two in, in each cluster. So just by coming through and doing a little bit of this, this hand work, and I don't even see it all. I can feel it. I can just reach in here and realize where there's three or four fruit and pick one or two. They all look pretty good. There really isn't any damaged fruit or fruit that I think you know, should be thinned on, on, on this one, you know, for, for reasons of, of quality of fruit. So it's basically just a matter of coming through and, and, you know, dropping the numbers down. Here's our Flavor Delight Aprium Espelier. So uh, did really well again this year. We've got it, you know, balanced out pretty well as far as the arms and the structure goes. We can, we'll do a little bit more work on it this, uh, this summer, maybe do a little bit more aggressive pruning on it this next winter, just to maintain shape but the fruit quality looks uh, looks good the fruit set is good it's not a re it's not a real heavy set but it's heavy enough where it could use a little thinning and it's already got some size i mean this is an early variety it's going to ripen up in uh, in may or the first of june so right now i just want to come in even though it's been thinned once already i can again look at a branch like this here's one two three four five six fruit on a small branch so i'm going to come out here on the end and take off uh four of those so two will be easily easily ripened in that section i can come up here and look at the same thing remember out toward the end take it off where the weight makes the most difference most of the fruit's nice there's not a whole lot of damaged fruit or deformed fruit so it's just a matter of uh, opening up these clusters and thinning it down to where the the weight's going to be well distributed i love this variety i love this the form of the of this tree it's been one of our you know, real standouts in this in this project, and uh, boy, if you don't have one of these, you need to put one in. Well, I'm always happy with what I'm able to accomplish in a fairly short period of time working on this little orchard. It's a lot of trees, and it's a lot of management, but uh, you know, there are several of us that work in on the project. So to be able to come out here for a couple of hours and 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 work on thinning or work on pruning or work on any little project that we have is uh, is always a good way to spend part of my day at least i feel that way i love i love to work outdoors and work in my landscape and work on projects like this and we've done now several years worth of video on this project from groundbreak to you know to now 2016 thinning so and i know i've talked on thinning before more than once but i think it's a subject that really deserves attention and it's something that is very intimidating to people. They generally are uncomfortable thinning fruit off of a tree, thinking that every piece they pull off, 
is something they're not going to be able to eat. When in fact, if they don't do that, the fruit size is small. The quality is not that good. You're putting a stress load on the tree that you don't want to... Uh, you don't want to do, you don't want the tree to have to recover from something that's so stressful like trying to, to ripen 1,500 pieces of fruit on the tree. So now's the time, early spring. You know, if you're on the west coast or in the southwest, the month of March is really your key month for thinning. So don't be intimidated by getting out. And uh, if you don't like to thin like I do, if you have more time and you want to thin entirely by hand, I'm not telling you that's the wrong thing to do. What I'm telling you is I don't have the time to do that, so I like to thin with clippers. I like to do 90% of my thinning work with my clippers. And it's real easy because we know we're going to thin a branch down by two-thirds or even three-fourths and leave the fruit down toward the heavier part of structure where the tree's going to be able to hold it. So if you want good quality fruit, you want well-spaced, good-sized, good quality, tree-ripened fruit, don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid to go out and thin. If you, if you have a light fruit set, it's always an option not to thin. But if you have a heavy fruit set and you don't thin, you'll, you'll be sorry for it in the long run. So spend some time in your landscape. Get to know your trees. Get out in the yard. Do some work right now. It's timely. It uh, doesn't have to be done today. It doesn't have to be done tomorrow. But it should be done in the next couple of weeks in the southwestern United States. And concentrate on the varieties that are going to ripen up early. Those May varieties are by far the most important. June comes next. July comes right after that. You can worry about the August and the September varieties later. The fruit's not, not quite there yet. They maybe are still in bloom. They don't even have a decent fruit set yet. So concentrate on what's there now. You've always got an opportunity to come back and thin again because no matter how aggressive you are, you probably won't be aggressive enough. That's why I like to do it in at least two sessions. Um, have fun with it. Enjoy your fruit trees. Enjoy your landscape. Until next time.